Shalom uvracha, dear friends, Rabbi Steve Texan of the Cuban Hebrew Congregation. Parashat Ekev, this week's beautiful Torah portion. Ekev, Ekev Tishmiun. If, as a consequence of obeying God's law, you will be blessed and protected. The word Ekev is a fascinating word in the Hebrew language. Literally, it means the heel. The heel. Do not trample over the mitzvot. Do not take them lightly. Do not, in effect, step on them. Meaning, not only the major mitzvot, but even the minor mitzvot, the less, less important, we don't know. They seem less important, but we don't know the value of even simple mitzvot. Therefore, all of them are important. Only God can measure and weigh the importance of all the different mitzvot. Don't take them lightly. And we are told in this parasha of the blessings of obedience, but of the dangers of disobedience. The dangers of becoming complacent, the dangers of drifting away, and the dangers of arrogance and haughtiness. That, for instance, when we achieve things, we think it is our own power that brought us to that state. No, it is God who has sustained us and enabled us to reach the goal. Like in the Shechayanu, God is the sustainer. And we make a Shechayanu when we achieve new goals, when we are blessed with new clothing, when we reach milestones in life. God is the driving force. We must acknowledge God Almighty. In light of the current pandemic that we are struggling to defeat nationally and globally, there's even a verse in this week's Parashat Ekev, V'hasir Hashem mimcha kol choli v'chol midvei Mitzrayim haraim asher yadata lo yesimam bach unetanam b'chol sonecha that God will remove all sickness. There's a promise that God will protect us from illness. And that's why we have this prayer daily, and even in the high holiday literature. We have an Avinu Malkeinu, a special Avinu Malkeinu, that God should remove all sickness and pestilence. And we will be blessed with children and land, the two greatest blessings. One of the greatest fears that a nation can have is that its, its people will not have children or not have a land in which to grow and flourish and fulfill God's mission for the Jewish people, because we are on a mission. We will be rewarded with children and land, but it's not only a reward for keeping the mitzvot, we will have a mission to fulfill in the covenant with God. As God fulfilled his covenant with the generation of the Exodus, he will fulfill 
the terms of the covenant in our generation and in future generations. It began with the covenant with Avraham Avinu and the patriarchs. Then the covenant at Sinai and he will continue to fulfill the covenant if we uphold our end of the bargain and we obey his mitzvot and we retain the enthusiasm of the mitzvot. As I said, we do not become complacent and take the mitzvot for granted. The worst would be to take God for granted and his loving kindness for granted. I have to mention that in upholding our end of the bargain, which is so important, our forefather Avraham Avinu committed to the covenant and to the, his mission in the world unconditionally. He proved it in the Akedah, in the, in the binding of Isaac. When God tested Avraham, as we will read on Rosh Hashanah, on the second day of Rosh Hashanah, Avraham passed the test. And that was why the test was so severe. To go and sacrifice his own son because God demanded it? Avraham passed the test that our people will fulfill the mission for all time. And the Akedah is the testament testimony to that, the proof. And that's why we always sing Bizchut Avot for the merit of our forefathers and foremothers we should merit God's aid, protection and salvation. Now we will be rewarded as it says in Parashat Ekev with rain that God alone will provide bountiful rain, much rain, that we won't even be a country that needs necessarily irrigation, although Israel has turned a desert into a fertile land because we are situated in a blessed country that God will bless, bless with abundant rain. Rain is always a symbol of God's providence over the people and over the land of Israel. Finally, I want to mention this incredible verse in Parsha Dekev that man does not live by bread alone, but by the utterance of God's mouth does man live. What does this really mean? It, it means that there's a difference between existence and life. With bread, we exist. But we live by bread and God's word, God's commandments, God's mitzvot. We don't only have a physical life, we have a spiritual life. And without the spiritual component, we don't live. We just exist. So therefore, we get back to the original theme. If we fully commit to observing the mitzvot and to fulfilling God's mission, we and all future generations will be blessed with all the blessings in the Shema Yisrael and the succeeding paragraphs of the Shema in this week's portion, the V'haya Im Shamoa, and God will continue to sustain us to arrive at all the blessed days ahead of us. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.